congrats on the film. I uh, I saw it at, at TIFF, where admittedly the response was kind of mixed, but I, it's the type of movie that I feel like is best seen, not not just like not like really alone, but it's just a movie that works emotionally on you. I don't know that like talking about it critically is always its best friend because it's more of like a, and and you'll you can talk about this more because I know it's a personal project like you feel it more than you sort of intellectually go like, okay, this happened and that happened. And that's what right. became a film. So like when you, when you sat down to write it, obviously you're, you're, you know, you're working through what you want to work through and you know, you have to make a viable film out of it, but how do you find the way that it works for you? Cause it does still feel very much like your project as opposed to maybe a director's vision. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And I, I do think it's kind of a quiet film you know? yeah. and it was sort of the, intention of it you know um was to be a small film you know like for me uh on a personal level i wanted to do something about the aftermath of grief you know yeah and just to give you a little background on it you know i'm i'm kind of interested and in what was at the time very interested in this idea that you know um how we try to reason and make sense of something tragic Right. And, you know, I think it's very difficult. And um, I think we turn to a lot of different avenues for help and guidance and, you know, platitudes that somehow pacify these emotions. And I, I also don't think that they they work very well, you know. And so I, I was sort of interested in that to begin with, um, you know, and getting people to buy on buy into that, you know, to buy into something really sad. You know, I, I don't think it's you know, from the get-go, when this script first hit the town, so to speak, it was, it was well-received, but at the same time, it, I think people had a difficulty seeing it as, like, a studio film, like you're saying, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you make this movie? How do you sort of uh, do this without bumming people out, you know? Um, that's why the, the comedy is a, a bit of a Trojan horse, you know, to yeah. deliver some of the, the more impactful, hopefully, truths, you know? of of grief and um you know the good news i i've been asked this question before it's like this is based on any personal experience and the good news is fortunately for me it's not but i think we've all experienced loss on some level you know um and you know i remember there was a time i had to it was somebody had lost a kid it was a seven-year-old who had died in an accident and i had to go to the funeral and you know there were a lot of people saying things like oh gosh he's in a better place you know jesus called him sooner and you know god wanted him by his side he wanted another angel and there were all these things being said at the funeral and i remember the father got up and just said no a better place is right here yeah this is wrong we shouldn't be here this is you know and i just thought wow you know that's that's what it's at its core, you know, the difficulty, that struggle to make sense. And sometimes there is no making sense of it. And that's sort of the, the indifference to human suffering, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's kind of what was at the heart of this when I wanted to explore it. And totally. So there you go. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what makes it, like you said, like well-received at the time, but also how do we make this movie, you know, size wise, who's going to be in and all those things, because it's, I think what it does that maybe kind of caught people off guard is there isn't a huge change, you know, where everyone right. is in the beginning and where they are at the end is, is very small, but right. it's the, it's almost like you just sort of like turn to look in a different direction. Like, okay, I can see the horizon now as opposed yes. to, you know, just the, the infinite bleakness. So I can, I can definitely understand why, you know, you probably had a lot of experience with people going, I loved your movie. Oh, cool. You want to sign on? Oh, hell no. I guess I'm right. not going to make this, but yeah. good luck. This is great. It takes a, it oddly, I think you're, I think when you said the comedy is a Trojan horse, it kind of takes people who have a comedic sensibility to want to make this because it is more appealing, I think, to a Melissa McCarthy and a Chris O'Dowd than, you know, your dramatic thespian Shakespearean actor. It was, it's hard to put into words how happy I was when two comedic actors were cast because yeah. to me, it was just essential, you know, um, and I won't go into the entire history of it, but there's been different people attached along the way, different directors, different talent interested in making it, you know, and uh, and I was nervous about the more dramatic turns that were going to be asked to do some things that maybe weren't necessarily in their wheelhouse, you know. Uh, I think it is an easier sell to audiences when you have 
people who have those comedic chops of that background, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a nice addition to the, to the mix. Oh yeah. And you, and I mean, the, the, the lightest character in the movie is Kevin Klein and like he's right. seen as a dramatic actor, but people seem to forget his Oscar is for comedy. Like he, <laughs> huge comedy, yeah. huge comedy. I mean, one of the funniest performances ever really. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think you do end up, and also, you know, timing is probably a lot of, like you said, different casts, different directors, some that I'm sure you were happy, more happy with than others, but always like, okay, my movie's getting made, I can get on board, but, you know, there's something about, oh, Ted Melfi just made a movie that almost won Best Picture, like, uh, out of nowhere, what do you want to do next? Oh, he wants to do my movie, that's, okay, that's how this is going to happen, you get someone with, like, the juice, and suddenly it all comes together. Yeah, it was interesting because I first the there's a producer named Dylan Sellers on the project who's, you know, um, really helped to finance the film. And it was Dylan who put us together and he had originally tried to put us together right before Ted got hidden figures. Mm. And so we just started having these conversations when, bam, hidden figures came. And so I was like, oh, man, that would have been a great fit, you know, because I really enjoyed yeah. St. Vincent. And, oh, yeah. uh, and he worked with Melissa before. Right. And so then that went away, you know, and it seemed like, OK, well, you know, it's not the first time something happened. Right. Yeah. You know, because uh, like you said, this it's been around for a while, the project. And so it was it was great when I got a call from Dylan, <laughs> Dylan uh, Sellers one day, I saw I had a missed call and I. I thought it was a butt dial. I really did. I thought it was an accident. I was like, God, I haven't heard from Dylan in a couple of years. Maybe he accidentally dialed me. I'll call him back because he didn't leave a message. And he said, no, I was just curious. What's the status of the script? Is there still an option on it? I said, it just lapsed the month before. And so it's available. And he's like, hang on. And he called me back about 10 minutes later. The next day we had lunch scheduled for him and myself and uh, Ted Melvin. Sorry about this. Ah, um, all good. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's how it kind of got started, you know, and, and we got back together and it happened so fast, you know, it really did. Yeah. It really came together quickly. Well, that's the thing. I think a lot of these movies take forever to happen for whatever reason. When it does happen, it's quick. It's because, yeah. you know, we can make it now. If we don't make it now, we're back to where we were six months ago and it'll be that way in another six months. But this schedule works out. This schedule works out. The money is here. It may not be here in six months. Let's yeah. make it right now. Yeah, that's what's crazy for me because, I, you know, it really is hard. I, I don't think people really understand how difficult it is for a movie to get made. And I don't care how good the script is, how excited people are about the project. It can just really, it, things have to align. The stars really do have to align. And I was shocked at how quickly this came together because there was ted had an availability in his schedule melissa had an availability you know uh, they were able to the money was there like you said and it was just like bam 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 but we got to do it right away in august and i held my breath till the very end i really yeah. did so they started principal photography i knew they had been scouting locations but there was another iteration of this film where they were scouting locations in upstate new york and um it looked like it was going to go you know i was already planning a trip so yeah. you know that, Land that plane you ticket. never know you just yeah. never know it wasn't really until i i they shot the, i think they began shooting the grocery store scenes in the beginning mm -hmm. the earliest um and i remember driving out to this grocery store the night before and i saw the production trucks out you know in yeah. the back and out front and that's when i knew okay this is really going to happen yeah. <laughs> they're really going to do it this time and when you start to see it come together does it look like what you had in your head even just on set you know, uh, there were some things that did, you know, it's never, um, you know, even when you, the movie that's playing in my head is never the same on paper, right? You're like, you just struggle to get it to exactly match, you know, you try to without overriding it. But uh, then, you know, that was another interesting thing. I learned because it's the first movie I ever had made. Um, once you once you sort of <clears throat> give it up and you give it over to the actors and the directors and costume designers and set designers, it's no longer yours. It's somebody else's vision as well. And that's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm, you know, washing my hands or anything like that, but it's like, Oh, it takes on a different life, you know, it's a new creation. And some of the things I thought the hospital was really well depicted. Like uh, 
I'd, I'd worked during college at a psychiatric hospital. So I was pretty familiar with the routines and the looks and, and I thought that was really well done, but yeah, it was, you know, in my head, originally the story was set in a small town and in a flyover state with kind of an invisible lead uh, actor character, um, you know, not a grocery store manager, but an assistant grocery store manager. You know, I really wanted to kind of hone in on the, the smallness of it. Like even you said, you noticed like the turn in the story is not a dramatic, yeah. seemingly dramatic cinematic turn. You know, it's a slight turn, but you know, these are the, the real steps in that process. So that's where I wanted to keep it. And um, so, but they did a great job, you know, shooting in Los Angeles to make it look like a small town. So I, I was happy with that. Yeah, And I mean, I, I got to imagine a lot of it is one, just having that perspective of it's not my movie anymore. So yeah. I hope I like it. I feel good about the people that are making it. I like yeah. things they've done. Like if it doesn't turn out right, I, I, there's nothing I can do about that anymore. Right. I just have to have confidence. And, and I mean, I'm sure you, you know, without getting into it, I'm sure there's probably a moment or two you're like, hmm, would have done that differently. But I'm sure there's moments that you fought for that Ted would have been like, no, nah, that's that's the opposite of what I want to do. That's right. just the, and yeah. and you're both right. Like, that's how you make a movie. Like, no. It is. Yeah, it, it can't is. just be the director's vision. It can't just be the writer's vision. Yeah, and it can't just be a producer's vision as well. You know, there were, um, there were a lot of discussions, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we had a lot of conversations about it. And there were certain, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, you know, like, some potholes that I were, you know, things I, I thought we, you needed to be wary of, right? Anytime you're doing emotion like this drama, you know, you, you have to be wary of, of uh, melodrama, sentimentality, you know, sentimentality is not a bad thing as long as it's true, right? Yeah. I, that's how I feel. And uh, a film, a story, a uh, piece of music can be sentimental as long as it feels real and, and right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we had a lot of discussions about that and how things should be played. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it was a, it's a tricky, I think it's a tricky film and yeah. a tricky subject to navigate. Yeah, I think as long as you all know that everyone at the table, and it's usually, you know, the writer, the director, yeah. a star, if they're big enough, a producer, a studio, if it's big enough, like as long as everyone who has a seat at the table wants the same thing. And mm -hmm. usually that's the case. You know, we all want to make a good movie. We all want to make right. the best movie possible. It's never, I don't think, you know, the cartoon that you see of like, oh, it's battling studio heads. And then like yeah. the height of Harvey Weinstein fucking with people. Like, yeah, that's not the norm. The norm is just, here's six people who have six different visions of this film. They all want it to be a best picture winner. They all want it to be amazing, but they right. all see a different movie. They all see a different price point. They all see a different yeah. shooting like. How do we merge that into a thing where everyone is the most satisfied? And that's, that almost, it like funds the wrong word because it's livelihood and work and money and time. But, sure. <clears throat> but like, there's a goodness to it. If you feel like, okay, we're solving these problems and we're happy with where we're going. Yeah. You know, there really is a lot of uh, truth in that. And especially in the sense of like, when you see so many talented people come together yeah. and you're watching it and you're watching the work and the commitment to it you know, at the highest level, and they're putting their names on something too, right? You know, and so they, they really are committed to the work and to the craft. It, it's really, it's fun to be a part of. It's humbling, you know, to know that you had that sort of initial step you laid yeah. the script down. But, uh, you know, uh, like Larry Sher, Lawrence Sher is the cinematographer, you know, and I remember at the time when he was shooting, Joker was just getting ready to come out and I was talking to him about it. I was kind of excited to see that film, you know? And, uh, you know, he, he was showing us looks, pictures and stuff he'd taken on set. And it was really remarkable looking. And, of course, it ended up getting him a nomination. And uh, we talked a lot about shooting on film versus shooting on uh, digital. And, you know, Ted loves to shoot on film. You yeah. know, in fact, insists on it. And so it was, uh, it was interesting to watch that, to watch truly a film gets shot on film you know and, and how and that it, works and it's hard work yeah and inevitably it's, it's a compromise yeah yeah and i'm sure yeah. i'm sure that was you know when you talk about the producer side that's like okay well that price point just went up so what are you willing yeah like what are you willing to sacrifice like that's also where i feel like you have a positive collaborator like okay you want to do that we'll do that what are you willing to say to you know the number just went here it needs to be back here what can we do to get here if you want to do this 
can you do this? And that's, right. you know, also takes not having, you know, the biggest ego and like, you know, listen, you're in the movie industry. There's a little bit there because you there's don't a make a movie there. if you don't think yeah. you're good enough to make a movie. But like right. you said, people were putting their name on it. Like Melissa McCarthy could be making $20 million for a comedy. She chooses to be here and, you know, basically makes pocket change. You know, Kevin yeah, right. Klein, yeah. Kevin Klein, you know, we joked about it a minute ago, but like everyone calls him Kevin Decline. Like he doesn't work. Right. He just, yeah. He's happy to be not retired, but I work when it's worth getting out of bed. And yeah, and, and you know, having to travel all the way to the West Coast and spend time here, you know, away from family and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's a, it's a lot to ask of the guy, you know, but right. he was really committed to the role. I remember he went and spent time with an actual veterinarian um, and watched a couple procedures, you know. Oh, yeah. the, he, he feels he feels real. Yeah. Um, especially that scene, you know, I I'm I'm an animal lover, so like. There's one scene that's a little, little, little tough, but is like held away from being that like cloying, like too much moment. But he plays yeah. it the right way because you don't, you know, most vets aren't the like movie vet of like, how can I, you know, they're not kind, gentle souls. Right. It's a job. They're, you know, it's horrible to think about, but that's not the only time they're doing that today. They can only be so comforting. I think he found the perfect level of like, this is a good guy, but it, it's, it's just a part of the job. Yeah, I think he's a guy who has a lot of empathy and uh, sometimes that's to his own detriment. You know, I think sometimes it was like when he worked in the, in my mind, when he worked in the mental health field, it became too much. He was losing a sense of himself, but still had this kindness and this capacity for empathy that needed expression. And so he went into veterinary medicine and, um, so yeah, interesting. I uh, I twisted my ankle and needed surgery my freshman year in college, Fine. and I, I went. So I got operated on, and you know how like six weeks later you go to get the cast off, yeah. and I was in this guy's office. You know how they always have the diplomas on the wall, yeah. right? And it had I remember it had like a University of Texas School of Medicine or you know board certified orthopedic surgery, and then he had University of Illinois School of Veterinary Medicine. <laughs> up on the wall and it was the same name and so when he came in to take the guest up I'm like hold on a second did I just get operated on by a vet and he's like yes as a matter of fact you know I've been a vet when I it was my first job and then I went back to school and started yeah. treating humans so when uh when you said we were going to fix you up I you gotta make sure I don't mishear that <laughs> yeah, like, what else did you do yeah I was asleep I just gotta hang on okay I'm still there okay we're good um before we before we wrap up, I'm just curious. So, like, we we talked a little bit before we start recording, just like the timing of this, you mm-hmm. know, COVID kind of like interrupts the end result of like seeing the fruits of the labors. When you do yeah. finally see the project, like, how does it feel? And that's a good way to kind of go out. How does it feel to see like there's a movie that started as a picture in my head and then words on a page? It's really hard to describe. It is, and if because it's sort of the culmination, like I was describing to you earlier first, you know, and I can just, I think it's a shared experience that I have with other screenwriters. The fact that anybody would be interested in something you've written is first and foremost, it's like a great feeling, right? And then when they're not only interested in it, they're actually willing to, to produce it, to see it come to fruition, that becomes even bigger, right? And so when you begin to work with them, that feeling, it's, I guess what I'm trying to describe to you to, it's just, it builds and it builds and it builds until you finally see it finished yeah. and the culmination of it. Uh, I was too nervous to watch it. You know, I, I asked my wife to watch it, you know, and I yeah. told her you got to watch it for me. Um, and so it felt wonderful. It really did. It truly did to see it come to life. And I'm really proud of it. And it is, you know, I think the timing of it is pretty uh, terrific in a way you know i think we are in a lot of ways trying to heal and i think there's a lot of people trying to grapple with the the feelings of grief and um so i hope this is something that and that people can identify with you know and the struggles of the main characters you know despite the fact that it's a specific type of loss for them but i think we've all experienced some loss and so i'm hopeful i think the film is hopeful you know, it's always tough with a feel good film, you know, you're not going to please everyone. And it's a oh. real, I think, a tough pill for a lot of critics to swallow. You know this. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's impossible. And I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there in the audience who will enjoy it. 
Yeah, and that's and that's where I think being on Netflix is is oddly beneficial in the sense of like somebody who's in the mood for that can just click and start, and right. it's not a a whole thing. Because I think that's that's what's going on right now is what's worth leaving the house to go see, and and that's yeah. a hard question to answer. Like you know, I want people to go see everything, but you know, that's a good point. That's would a good point. you? Yeah, like would you? Like I I I I like the I like the startling at TIFF, but. You know, I saw 25 movies overall. Like, you know, there's a solid like 10 that I would be like, these are amazing, you must go see. But would I tell someone to go like put on a mask and go sit in a movie theater for two hours? And, you know, like there's a lot of little calculations that like I totally get. It. So that's yeah. where the streamers are, you know, I, I want to be against them, not in terms of like, I don't want them to do well, but I want more theatrical. You know, Netflix is, it depends right. on the movie. But at the moment, like this is a movie that was always, I think, and this is not a, a detriment, like meant to be eventually watched on TV with like a family. Yeah. Like it's yeah. you know, there like debuting on TBS is a bad thing, you know, in terms of like bottom line and you paying your rent. But like one day when it plays on cable, like that's just gonna be like, oh, it's it's Thanksgiving and like that's what everyone's watching after dinner. And yeah. that's you know you made it. And reaching as many people as possible too, you know, and I think that's another thing that, that I'm really grateful that Netflix came on board. That's for sure. As opposed to, I have a, another film that I wrote that's being shot right now. And it's, you know, it's independently financed, you know, it's regionally territories have been sold and that sort of thing. So it's not going to be, it's going to take a while for it to get into that streaming, I think, you know, yeah. and theme. But uh, so I am really grateful that it, you're, you're right. That uh, it's a good time for, to Netflix for Netflix to have it totally and you know like you said it's just weird when people want to make your thing and then when you hear like oh somebody wrote a check for more money than I'll ever see in my life for the thing yeah. that I wanted like right. I don't understand it but I appreciate it and uh yeah you know it, it, it's scary and awfully uh, uh incredibly satisfying at the same time you know oh, yeah. and that's yeah. a that's a dueling emotion on a, <laughs> a regular basis with a tiny bit of like is there a way for me to just take like a little off the top like i wrote it yeah where's my job yeah like yeah. like i know what 10 percent of that is and it's it's a lot like it's I'll, a lot yeah, yeah. It's a lot like, yeah like i'll cater i'll cater for the 10 percent. what do you need <laughs> i'll drive everyone to the premiere um, yeah but yeah no you should be you should be very proud and uh i i think like you said you know some critics didn't go for it i think that's also just the nature oh, yeah. A film festival like sometimes i feel like there's a quote of like okay i like three things today i gotta find something that's a little sure. less so you know a, a movie that like i think honestly is meant to make people go okay this was good i enjoyed myself like you don't necessarily have to be over the moon about it right. it's easy for some people to then go okay i'm just gonna dismiss that one but also yeah. i think maybe the flip side of just like oh i saw three german films that just made me want to kill myself and they're and like i don't I'm not responding Here's something that maybe I see a flaw in, but also it made me feel good and that's worth more to me. So there's also that. Yeah, you know, and, and look, uh, this is my first uh, rodeo as it goes, you know, and I know you can't please everybody, but I've no. known that forever, right? And so um, I take it with a grain of salt. I try to, you know, obviously you want everybody to love it and worship it and, you know, to fall head over heels and love it. But uh, look, you know, I'm sure there are films that have one, best picture in the academy awards that you've seen that you were like huh oh yeah, yeah. right oh. and then others that didn't get consideration you were throwing your arms up going come on yeah you know and and i feel that myself all the time i think we all do so oh, yeah. subjectivity you know again going back to netflix it's wonderful that it'll it'll be there and available to so many people yeah. you know they won't have to go outside their homes necessarily and risk whatever there is to risk out there. It seems, you know, kind of still a sketchy time to be sitting in an enclosed space, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, it was weird up there, but I'm sure it was. I, I was glad I did it. I'm a, you know, I don't have kids. I'm not like, I'm not in a position where I feel like I'm risking anyone. No one really is around me, but yeah. and I, you know, test negative and all those things. But yeah, you know, like this is a movie that's meant for like, you know, not older people, but per se, like right. the adult drama that like you don't necessarily sure. get. Those right. are the people who shouldn't be going out and like putting themselves at risk. Right. Right. That's so true too. Netflix That's is true. Netflix is lives. Themselves. That's what we're going yeah. with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. And I, I do look forward to the next one because I think there's a, 
there's a voice here that is that is interesting and I want to see more of it. Thank you very much. It was great meeting you. Likewise. <laughs>